So let me ask you guys a question. Have you ever gotten your gearbox, lands, you unwrap it, and it's got all this stuff on it, and you're like, what the heck is all this stuff? So today we're going to go over what the heck all this stuff is, and uh, we're going to get started here in a, just a second. Hey, this is Scott from Sumitomo Drive Technologies, and today we're going to talk about accessories, or in other words, your gearbox just landed, you unwrapped it, and you got everything and the kitchen sink on there. So first things first, we're going to go over the two different types of lubrication systems that are most common, uh, one being splash lubrication, and the second obviously force lubrication. So this is a plunger type pump. It looks almost like a roller lifter for you car guys out there. So this guy's spring loaded and he is pushed in and out so it is a pressure pump right so it's it's mainly it's just displacement so we're forcing oil through here it picks up and this is cam driven so these cams are ratio sensitive this is mounted on the inside of the gearbox this is mounted on the outside of the gearbox there's one line that comes out connects to the usually to the high speed side and this guy rotates on this axis against the pump like this. So it rolls across there, this guy's turning, and it pushes the pump in. So that is what you'll see on a cyclo for force lubrication. So we're gonna to move to GB, so we, that, that's the, that, that'll be the number one uh, force lubrication pump in action that you'll see on a, on a GM product, cyclo product. And here is a, a shaft driven pump. So our shafts, intermediate shafts, most of them have provisions to accept uh, the shaft driven pump. So these guys are usually driven with either a socket head cap screw, this, this is socket head cap screw, which these screw into the end of the intermediate shaft, and as the intermediate shaft turns, this guy rotates, right? And then you have a pickup for the inside, and then all the plumbing for this, you see there's no external plumbing, all the plumbing for this shaft driven pump is internal to the, to the gearbox. We also have shaft driven pumps where the plumbing is external and they'll have fittings on the outside and you'll see external plumbing that comes out and then goes up to the distributor block. So that is a shaft driven pump. But all of them, if, unless you have internal plumbing, all of them will be connected to some sort of distributor block. This is mounted on the outside. So the oil is actually coming into here, it's coming through the filter and then it's coming to the distributor block and we have three outlets on this one but we have provisions for, for many more up to, uh, looks like we have seven outlets here. And these are gonna go to your bearings. So we have a distributor block, we have a filter, uh, very important to the lubrication system. You'll see these in almost all of our lube systems. Also, another part of forced lubrication is a check valve. So basically this becomes, uh, this will be on the inlet side of the pump, so we hold ahead of pressure, that way the pump doesn't start dry over and over again. That's very dangerous, especially when it's uh, below about 50 degrees out. Oil's a little bit thicker. Uh, you want this guy, he's got, a, he's got a little ball inside there and a spring. These are different rated, and this will keep the pressure of the oil up against the pump, so when the pump starts, immediately there's flow. We're going to talk about the sa some safety devices and some ways to keep an eye on what's going on with the lubrication on, on both splash lube and force lube. And yes, there is a safety device that we can provide to help you guys out for, for splash lube gearboxes. This guy here, he is a temperature switch. Now he's, he's a switch, it's not a transducer type, so we actually have an indent ball, ball right here. So that's keeping track of the temperature. Temperature gets too high, you, you have, this is usually to your PLC, temperature gets too high, it can shut the motor off or send you some sort of alarm. And these are instructions, so don't do that. You got to keep the instructions. This is a temperature gauge. So this is a visual. This does not have any signal. So this is, you can walk by the gearbox and do a, a quick check of what the oil temperature is. So the first one I showed you was a temperature switch. So this does have a switching mechanism to send a signal either for an alarm or actually to shut the motor off. So those are, this is an electronic safety device. First one is definitely a mechanical, There's, with, uh, does not send a signal. Another mechanical device 
that you'll see on cyclos when you have the cam pump is a flow sight. So this is a, a good visual mechanism to make sure that you have flow. This ball here, you'll see the ball floating. These are typically mounted like this. They can be mounted this way as well. Some types can. And you'll see uh, oil coming up through as this ball is moving. Um, make to, you know, it gives you a good visual that you have positive oil flow to the bearings. So this is another temperature switch that you can use for, you know, it can, it can be used for uh, splash lube as well as force lube. You see these more in force lube. And this also gives you an indication of what the oil temperature, gearbox temperature is, uh, either one, to make sure that you're in a, a, a good operating uh, temperature. One of the more popular uh, safety devices that you see in force lubrication, and this is a flow switch. Now this is a mechanical flow switch, so it actually has an indicator on it. Uh, and it also is set at two different, the indicator will tell you two different oil thicknesses. And we can, um, this is a preset switch, and, uh, but this is also is a mechanical type. So it, they're, these are really good, but they have to, you know, they have to stay clean because it, it is a mechanical switch and um, they're, they can be sensitive to, you know, dirt getting in the oil and things like that. So, but this is a switch, this is a flow switch. This is also a type of a flow switch, but this is a transducer type. So this is based, this is based on resistance. And this guy can be mounted in a, um, only used in force lubrication, just like the mechanical switch. And uh, I'm gonna show you, this is just the probe itself. It has to be wired to this guy, and then this guy goes to your whatever control device, PLC, that type of thing. But this is, this is electronic and this is mechanical. So the difference between, like, like we said, the difference between, this is an electronic switch, so it's based on resistance, like solid state transducer, and this is a mechanical switch. So it's built on actual, the, the material flowing through there, the liquid or the air that's flowing through this guy. The next one for splash lube, this is a, um, oil level switch. These guys are great. We preset them from the factory. Um, it, has a, it has a float inside of here. This is one of our own designs. It looks kind of crazy, but these guys work great. So those are the types of safety devices that are the most popular for, for force lube and for splash lube. Uh, another really popular device to help you during uh, cold startups is what we call an oil heater. This is what this guy is. Uh, these are thermostatically controlled. We, we have some instructions. Um, a lot of threads on that guy. So this thing's adjustable here. Now don't cook the oil. I don't crank this thing all the way up because it will. It'll, it'll cook the oil in there. They can get pretty hot. Here's what we see all the time with these. We put them in and they ship to uh, cold states or cold countries and then you guys don't wire them up. And then we, oil is too thick, and we shear bolts off or we shear pins. They can be driven with pins or bolts, and, and these guys are, I mean, this is a mechanical device. Oil's too thick, it can't pump it, and we end up shearing them off. So if there's a heater in there and your temperatures get below 50 degrees ambient, you need to have this, you need to have this guy set up and running. Very, very important that the oil is thin enough to be pumped um, or be, you know, utilizing the gearbox at startup. So these are, these are very valuable. Um, so if you have it in there, then more than likely, it should be hooked up. Next thing we're gonna talk about is, is connection devices. This is couplings, shrink disc, uh, and we have uh, one of our uh, unique devices for, for uh, uh, shaft mounts is a taper grip bushing. So I'm gonna go over to taper grip bushing first. So this is a taper grip bushing. We, we get a lot of questions on how this, how this works. Um, it's unique to Sumitomo as far as I know. Uh, so this will screw into a BBB or HBB. These are size specific. Um, these, this is your shaft board from your connection shaft. Uh, so this has to be, you know, it's based on whatever size that you provided to us. So how this, how this guy works, it's like tightening up a bolt. But we have right in there, there's a split. So this split stays open, right? You see how that's open. 
And then when we screw this in, right, you slide to slide the gearbox onto your shaft. And then we have a thrust collar. This goes up against the face of the gearbox. And then we have these bolts that we tighten up. And this, as we tighten up the bolts, it draws the bushing across the shaft and these, these splits here, or slits, they go away. They collapse onto your shaft. That's what gives it the grip. And we always preach about there has to be a gap here. I've exaggerated, but the minimum is one millimeter. And that is so when you loosen it up, we can knock the bushing back this way, and bam, it releases against the threads, and then you can unscrew it or you can slide the gearbox off. But that's how a taper grip bushing works. We got threads, we got a slit, we're trying to collapse it onto your shaft. These guys work great. The next connect, real popular connection, so the shrink disc requires a special, in most cases, a special output shaft. Same concept really as a, as a taper grip uh, hub. This, you slide the gearbox onto the shaft. This guy's on the outside of the gearbox. On the out, uh, you know, your shaft is coming through here and we tighten up these bolts in a, you know, just like you're tightening up a, a tire on a car. So, you know, you're doing it in a cross pattern. But you have to, you know, you, you gotta make sure that you, you follow the instructions on how to install these guys. Probably the most popular input connection is just a simple jaw type coupling. So you have, you'll have a, a motor side and then you'll have a reducer side, all right? So this is the driver, what people call the driver, and this is called the driven. The spider in the middle here is made out of a, a certain material. These come in a lot of different types of material based on, based on you know, what, you, what you need. A standard, I think, is nitrile and so this guy goes on, there's no, there's no interference fit here, it's set screws, it's pretty tight fit, you got the key, make sure you set it up right, make sure your alignment's good, these guys will last for a long, long time. So next up is backstop, we're going to show you what a, what a backstop looks like and kind of what it does. Backstops are what they are, they hold the gearbox in a direction that you specify. So we want the gearbox to only turn counterclockwise. We're holding a conveyor up. We're holding a fan. Uh, we only want the fan to turn in one direction. That's what these guys do. But you see this zip tie right here? Do not take that zip tie off before installation. We leave this on there until we get this onto the shaft. Because if that guy comes out, it's a pain to put it back together. You basically have to zip tie all your sprags back together. So. I had that zipped off for, for a reason. But this will only turn in one direction. And this is an internal or integral backstop. So it's inside of a special housing and usually it takes a special shaft to have one of these guys. I'm going to talk a little bit about a, uh, we get a lot of questions about breathers. A lot of people don't know that you can take this apart and the element inside can be cleaned. Uh, you can use some good soap and water. I, I, we like to use uh, dish, you know, some dish detergent because uh, these will get, you know, they'll get oil inside of them and, and other grime. But, and make sure you install them before you start the gearbox. We talked about that in, in earlier videos. This is a desk case breather. These remove moisture from the gearbox and they've got these cool little ports here and it's based on uh, your application on, there'll be a recommendation on their website which please make sure you read the instructions on how many ports here to re you can remove for your application. And this will turn, this will change colors as it, basically as it's, you know, time, time to change. And that's it. So next upcoming videos, we're going to go over shrink disc installation, the do's and the do nots, and the don't do that's, as well as taper grip bushings. Uh, we're going to, we have a, a really cool uh, apparatus here. We're going to show you guys how to install gearboxes. Same thing goes with the torque arms. We're going to show you how to do that. Upcoming videos, the next series is going to be how to. Another thing to keep an eye on is, is condition monitor, monitoring. We're working on what we call the smart gearbox. So stay tuned because that's, that's going to be coming up very soon as well. Make sure, you, make sure you check out our other videos, follow us on social media, and you better subscribe to our YouTube channel. What do you think, man? Nailed it. He's right. new, so he's new. Yeah, yeah he's he new. Know what he's in for.